Welcome to another session of spectroscopy. In this session, we'll look into chromic shifts or effects in UV visible absorption spectra. If you haven't subscribed it, please do subscribe so that you don't miss such informative videos. Drop in your comments and tap the like button if you like the video after watching. At the end of the session, you'll be able to define chromophore, chromogen, oxochrome, etc. Explain the bathochromic shift and hypsochromic shift. Elucidate the hypochromic and hypochromic effect with examples. First, let us understand the principle behind UV visible spectroscopy. When UV or visible light passes through the compound with the multiple bonds, the transition of valence electrons from lower to higher energy level occurs and gives rise to UV visible spectroscopy. We will see how the molecular orbitals are formed. When two atomic orbitals combine, it forms two molecular orbitals, one with a lower energy called bonding orbital and the other with a higher energy called antibonding orbital have shown both with sigma and pi bonds. And we have another orbital called as non-bonding orbital where the lone pair of electrons occurs that is in heteroatoms such as oxygen, sulfur, nitrogen, etc. And I have shown the different levels of energy of these molecular bonds and we have four types of transitions sigma to sigma star, pi to pi star, n to pi star, n to sigma star. And how to identify which compound undergoes which type of transition. Whenever you see sigma, it means that you have a single bond. And when you see n, it means that there is a heteroatom with a lone pair of electrons. And where there is pi, it means there is a multiple bond that is double or triple bond. So sigma to sigma star means there is only a single bond without any heteroatom like CH or CC. And when you see n to sigma star, there is an heteroatom with lone pair of electrons, but it has a single bond only. So C single bond O, C S, C N, etc. Pi to pi star means there is a multiple bond, but no heteroatom like C double bond C or C triple bond C. N to pi star double bond as well as we have an heteroatom like C double bond O, C double bond S, etc. So if you look at the order of energy required for these transitions, the highest energy required is for sigma to sigma star and the lowest energy required is n to pi star. We will understand what is a chromophore. The covalently bonded group present in a molecule which is capable of absorbing UV or visible light and exhibit a characteristic absorption band. It can be ethylenic, acetylenic, carboxylic, carbonyl esters etc. Now we will take the example of acetone molecule. Here the carbonyl group is capable of absorbing UV light or visible light and exhibit a characteristic absorption band. But the whole acetone molecule is called as a chromogen. So the compound possessing the chromophore is called as a chromogen. And commonly we have two transitions that is pi to pi star and n to pi star. We'll see what is an oxochrome. It's a functional group attached to the chromophore. Here, this oxochrome does not absorb light on its own, but it alters the absorption wavelength or intensity of the absorption band of the chromophore. That is, this OH group will not absorb any light, but when it is attached to the chromophore, it will alter the absorption wavelength and intensity of the absorption band. We will see how it happens. The four type of chromic shifts or effects are here we have epsilon max on the y axis and wavelength on the x axis. That is when the absorption band shifts to the longer wavelength we call it as a bathochromic shift or red shift and when it moves to the shorter wavelength we call it as a hypsochromic shift or blue shift. And when the intensity of this absorption band increases we call it as hypochromic effect when it decreases we call it as hypochromic effect normally a bathochromic shift is accompanied by hypochromic effect and hypsochromic shift is accompanied by the hypochromic effect and we'll see in detail about the bathochromic shift with an example that is when the absorption band shifts to the longer wavelength we call it as bathochromic shift it can be due to the presence of an oxochrome it can be due to the change in the polarity of the solvent or presence of conjugation. This is very important. The higher the conjugation, higher is the shift towards the longer wavelength. 
So we can actually identify the extent of conjugation in the molecules. We will see this example. Benzene is actually coplanar but when this amine group enters we see that the lone pair of electrons present on the nitrogen delocalizes the pi system of the aromatic ring. This actually increases the conjugation so the energy gap will decrease and it leads to bathochromic shift. I said the more the conjugation the or the presence of conjugation will increase the wavelength shift in the wavelength that is especially towards the longer wavelength and that is called as bathochromic shift and normally when a bathochromic shift occurs we said that it is accompanied by hyperchromic effect so we see that epsilon max value also increases from 200 to 1430 and lambda max value increases from 256 to 280 nanometers we'll see what is hypsochromic shift that is the absorption band shifts to the shorter wavelength this can be due to the presence of an oxychrome change in the polarity of the solvent or removal of the conjugation just opposite there we said presence of conjugation here removal of conjugation that is when the conjugation is disturbed or distorted it actually shifts to the shorter wavelength we can look at the example of biphenyl the lambda max is 250 nanometer when the methyl group enters in 2 methyl biphenyl we see that the planarity is disturbed okay here although we call it as coplanar the rings are at an angle of 45 degrees but it is better but when the methyl group enters we see that it further pushes the coplanarity and it is disturbing the conjugation so it will have a weak orbital overlap and the lambda max value decreases from 250 to 237 so the shift is towards the shorter wavelength and it is accompanied by decrease in the epsilon max value also from 19,000 to 10,250. I always said hypsochromic shift will be accompanied by hypochromic effect also. So we will see hypochromic effect here it increases the intensity of the absorption band and it can be due to the presence of oxochrome or change in the polarity of the solvent or presence of conjugation. The same uh, factors which affect the bathochromic shift will hold good for hyperchromic effect also. But here the intensity of the absorption band increases. So we see we take the same example we see that the epsilon max value increases from 200 to 1430. And hypochromic effect here the intensity of absorption band decreases due to the presence of oxochrome change in the polarity of solvent and removal of conjugation similar to what we saw in hypsochromic effect and we look at the same example and we see that the epsilon max value decreases from 19,000 to 10,250 and this is all for the session let us meet in another session in the next session we will discuss about the factors affecting this chromic effects why what are the factors which will actually lead to this bathochromic shift or hypochromic shift or hyp so chromic shift and hyperchromic effects. So with, uh, with this we will end the session. Let us meet in another session. Until then bye bye. Please tap the like button if you like the video and drop in your comments and subscribe if you haven't subscribed the channel yet. Thank you. Bye bye.